Mr. Truck here with another truck review. Towing trailers. We're up at Estes Park on 8,000 feet. And we have the new 2014 Ram 2500 with the 6.4 Hemi. Now, let me tell you, this is my pick for the that uh, three-quarter ton gas truck right now. I'm really happy with the way this truck works. And I'm here with Kelsey. Kelsey. And how much power does this 6.4 Hemi have? It's got a 410 horsepower and a 429 foot pounds of torque there you go and it tows great so you'll you'll see the rest of the story here coming up on mrtruck.com jump up there. Yeah, you kind of got to hop in. <laughs> Does that fit pretty well? You got a lot of adjustments on the seat? Got everything on the seat. Back, forward. What is this one? It's got the power pedals, which are kind of nice. Yep. Does it do the scoping too? No. No, just tilt? Well, yeah, Ram is someday going to do telescope. Everybody else has got a butt ram right now. It's nice. Yeah. I like the brown. I do brown. Yeah, I, I like the two-tone brown. It's good. Here's this hop again. Yeah, way up high in that truck. Yeah, but even for not being a mega cab or it's got the four-door, it's got lots of room. In it. It's actually pretty good. You've got good leg room. Seats up tall enough, you can get comfortable. This one happens it actually seats six people, which I like. I like the folding console it turns into a seat in the front row. That's nice. I wish awesome. mine had a metal seat. Yeah, another big ram for you, Kelsey. This is like your thing, these big tall rams. <laughs> I just had to lift mine. Yeah. <laughs> for towing, we've got the pop-up mirrors. Yeah, and it's got the spotter mirror on it and everything. Makes it real nice. Cool. What's really nice with this box for safety and keeping all your stuff yours is when it's locked, it doesn't open. So when you unlock your truck, it locks all of your boxes. That unlocks a tailgate too, doesn't it? It does. That's awesome. You lock everything with one key fob. Everything yours. Awesome. But the boxes are nice and deep. How and much beer could you put in one of those? 164 bottles. 164 <laughs> bottles of beer on the wall? Yes. <laughs> with your ice. Okay. With your ice. What's really nice is there's storage underneath the back floor. It comes with little totes. And the actual totes actually come out. Awesome. What? What's this, Kent? I think that's your reducer for your hitch. Yes, because that that's a two and a half inch receiver, and this way you can put your two inch receiver inside there. And this has lips. For are you paying attention? GM and Dodge have this lip, or GM and Ram. So you slide it in there. You can't go too past it. With Ford, you got to move it in and out. This is good. I'm glad it came with that two and two and a half to a two inch reducer. Awesome. That's nice. Look what's under the seat. Wow, that makes the whole flat floor back there so you can go it, sleep on it with your sleeping bag. You can put the big screen TV in there. That's that's a good idea. Show sure, if you like that, huh? I like that. That would be neat for my pickup. And it's easily folded away. And then yeah. hidden by the seat. Yeah, it's kind of like a minivan. It's got all these toys. You just got to find them all. <laughs> So this middle seat doubles as a seat, but it's also your center console. Cool. Got three cup holders. You can always put whatever oh, you need. Oh, put your cameras in there. Yes, that looks good. You've got the SD room. card, the auxiliary cord, 12 volt DC. Yeah, and then you still have a tray here below the seat. Mm -hmm. I bet probably pops off if you want more leg room, but no, that looks good. Well, not only that, but it's got a nice yeah, huge so tray. Yeah, got another there. little tray. Besides all of these trays, you got up here, you got two glove boxes, that's kind of common. So here we've got the 
box light bull ramps that are six and a half feet that are arched and cross raised for some stability. We've got the two straps tying them on so we don't so happen to fall off or get out of the way. Make real nice loading ramps or walking ramps. Up here we've got these and if we turn these you can actually move these anywhere you want. Yeah, they're spring loaded and they tighten up. Yep. And then you move them the other way once they're in a groove and you can lock them there. That's great. That's great cargo management. I like that. Step blows out of his ram box. It's the same width all the way front and back, which is a little over four feet. So just ready enough for him to get a piece of plywood or a four wheeler in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Now if you want to slide both those all the way forward, go right into them with the four wheeler. six to get a normal size four-wheeler in here and this has some other management things tailgates extender will use but even to get the ramps in those ramps are six and a half feet and you can see they don't quite fit so we've got to keep the tailgate down and to make up for that we've had to use a hitch extender I'll talk about that in a little bit but we're gonna make all this fit and we're gonna use shock straps to hold it in there the best strap that I've seen for holding four-wheelers in so we're gonna do the tailgate divider next extension Okay, Kelsey, how does that, uh, that tailgate divider work? It works pretty cool. So, you can either use it as an extender and pull it out and put it on the back. Cool. Or, you can use it as a divider on the inside and it'll fit anywhere down the pickup. That's nice. You can put it all the way to the front and out of the way or use it to divide cargo, which might be mm -hmm. all your groceries, my groceries, so we don't keep them together. You know? Yeah. <laughs> don't eat the same thing, right? Yeah. Um, and the other thing about this is it locks. So you take the key for the truck and you lock it. And now you can't get this in or you can't get it out. It doesn't awesome. open up, doesn't shut. And it uses the same key for your pickup. Cool. Now when you unlock it and you open these up, they'll actually, you got to flip it around and they'll fit in these special notches on that, which that way keep the cargo in, keep the ramps from coming out, and whatever else you might have if you want to tailgate down and use up the extra cargo space. So if you want to turn that around and put it into position. Yeah, and then that top peg twists one way or the other. That one's got to be out first. Okay. It's got to completely go in. There you go. And this side it goes over the bottom peg and then the top peg. Cool. Awesome. And yeah, you got a bed extender. So you can haul all kinds of stuff. Keeps everything in. Put that extra bale of hay in there. Awesome. Okay. Alrighty, now this is the shock strap. Big cushion in there. It's got a nice big cushion in here. It's awesome for four wheelers. You got four wheelers have their own suspension, so when you're going down the road, they don't stay flat all the time. Well, this actually gives it a room to absorb that shock so that your straps don't come loose or your four wheelers are not flying out of the back of your bed. Real nice and easy to put on. Good design. Yeah, you tie push, it off. 
push you down one more time. Push that way more than you do. When I push down, it goes down one way. <laughs> okay, that looks good. That looks good. Secure, Kelsey. Better now? Yeah, I'm happy. Alrighty. <laughs> it is your four wheeler, so I, I'd be mad if I lost mine too. Yeah, I hate to see him bounce down the road. That always annoys me when I see my four wheeler bouncing down the road. It's never a good day. No. Never a good day. Now another situation with this short short bed of rams, six foot three or six foot four, is the tailgate down. Of course, it's in the way of the hitch. You might hit the, tra the trailer. You might hit the trailer jack. So I had to use an extension to get it out far enough to turn the corners. Now what you got to watch out with the extension. This is a two-inch square extension. It's a solid shaft up here. You always want to get a solid shaft type. Don't get a hollow one on the uh, on the female side or the male side. You want that solid to be strong. But all of these hitch extensions take away one third of your tongue weight. So, you know, if you could pull a 15,000 pound trader like what this was rated at, you've lost 5,000 pounds. Now you can pull a 10,000 pound trader using this kind of extension. So, that's what you got to remember. That all those things with weight distributing hitches and with the hitch extensions, there's rules about them. So, remember, you lose one third of your tongue weight with the hitch extension. And also, on these tall rams, I always have to use a drop down hitch. This is the Anderson a weight distributing hitch that you can use for a hitch or weight distributing. I use it because I've got the long drop which you have to use. I'm on the very bottom hole just to get it lined up level with my trailer. And that's what you got to do. You want to make sure you keep the truck level and the trailer level. You got to do that with drop down hitch on Rams. It's the tallest of the three three of Detroit brands. Rams the tallest. So you got to use an extension and a drop down a lot of the time. Oh, I guess I should say let's go, huh? Come. We gotta go home at some point. <laughs> Says, but I like Estes Park. Estes was fun, huh? Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm getting in there too. Ready to go? Yes, the big, big ram. I'm sure, it's a longhorn. Big horn. Big horn. Big horn. <laughs> it's the big horn ram. I love this truck. I like the color. It's very pretty blue. Yeah, and it's two-tone brown, and the interior is like my favorite combination. It is. It's nice. And this puppy has got that new 6.4 Hemi that you told us it has 410 horsepower and has 429 foot-pounds of torque. So it's got plenty of power. The torque curve on this is actually about a thousand RPM lower than what the 5.7 Hemi is. So your power starts earlier on this truck, besides having a little more power. And I really like it. If you get this with the Ison transmission, this one doesn't have it, but then you can run that MDS, multi-displacement system, and only run four cylinders at a time, like when you're loading a wrecker or using hydraulics, which is really cool. This one has the regular uh, Ram transmission. I think it's like a 68R FE, and it's uh, has a 410 rear end, so it has good grunt power, and actually tows pretty well. I've been doing fuel mileage numbers on this, and 70 miles a gallon, just the empty truck, I was getting 17.7, which is way above the baseline for any of the trucks I've tested in this class. Uh, it's even above the, the GM 6 liter, and it's way above the, the Ford 6.2. But, uh, you know, it's uh, with that MDS. When you're with a trailer, of course, it doesn't kick on. You have in tow mode and you're pulling the trailer. You got all the power you need, you know, so you're going to get seven, eight, nine miles a gallon, whatever you figure out to be there. But without it, I've had the same clip clip 20 miles to the gallon on four cylinders, 
And there's a lot of times when you're driving across Kansas or eastern Colorado or someplace that's flat and you don't need the extra power and you've got it on cruise control, it'll get excellent fuel mileage. Oh, just, that road won't go out or you're... Oh, no, I'm taking a detour. Look at my mirrors. Oh, you want the mirrors? You like those mirrors, huh? I like the mirrors. Well, either okay. one, we got to do one way or the other <laughs> is my thing. <laughs> That's, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't mind having them up. I don't mind having them down. I just, yeah. just got to be able to see out of both of them. Uh, okay, yeah, you want to be symmetrical and parallel. This is good. That's how I am, too. And with these mirrors, you know, these extend the most of any of them. They're not the biggest mirror in the class, but they do extend the farthest of any of the other truck models. So I really like these puppies. It's got a decent spotter mirror. It's got a really nice spotter mirror. And it doesn't vibrate. The earlier ones, back in 2003 and four, when I first went to this arm in the Super Duties, or the Heavy Duties, I mean, they vibrated quite a bit, especially 2003. Uh, that was still the old body style with the new mirrors and in 2004 the heavy duties caught up with the light duties and got the new body style you know, we've had a few bodies since then but you no know, good mirrors are heated mirrors and I think they're gonna do some changes for the 15 this is a 2014 but um, 0 to 60 on this is an empty truck you've got 11.37 11.63 so I'll show that average on the uh, on the video and stopping distance at 60 miles an hour to zero it stopped at 175.5 feet which isn't great uh, from my experience with these rams they've improved their brakes and they've been doing really better on our long-term tests but that's kind of where that is now the payload for which you can throw in the back of this is 3171 pounds and then they add to 12,000 pounds with it but it uh it's one of the highest rated towing uh, packages you can get the gas engine in a heavy duty series you know, compared to uh, Chevy GMC and Ford. But uh, this puppy is pretty well loaded. It's 39,755 is MSRP with all the destination charges and all that. And this package, it's got the RAM box, it's got the locking key fob. Now let's see what they call this blue. It's called Blue Streak Pearl Coat Exterior. It's very pretty. Very yes. pretty. Tire pressure monitor, that's nice. Trader sway control, that's the standard electric stability control. It's got the trailer brakes right here. Yeah, and it's, on, it's where it should be. It's on the right side, GM. Hope you make note of that. Ford started out on the right side. GM or hasn't done it. They moved them up, but Ram moved it on the right side. Very good location. It's still in arm's reach. It's nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But so is also the four-wheel drive. I don't have to shift on the floor anymore like in my pickup. Yeah, and it's a knob and you can see everything. GM has done that weird thing where they stuck them on the left side this year and you don't know the headlight from that four-wheel drive knob. But, no, this is nice. And I like the radio controls on the back side of the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was a good idea. I think the other people are starting to copy that now. That's nice. 180 amp alternator. Doesn't need as big of an alternator unless it's a diesel. Heated steering wheel. Whoa. That would be nice in the winter time. Yeah. And that RAM box, that's the cargo management system we were just demonstrating. Uh, how that, uh, use a bed extender, use it as a divider. What are we doing? Well, <laughs> not everybody on vacation is thinking straight. Yeah. Of course, we're in Colorado. A lot of them are going to be high, Rocky Mountain high, you know. Yep. Yeah, we're <laughs> not up in trees. <laughs> we're not high in elevation. Well, we are, but. Yeah, there's the, the new the new money maker for Colorado has a lot of Rocky Mountain high folks up here. It's just so pretty up here. It really is. It is. It's awesome. Let's see those clearance lamps so I can be a real trucker. Yeah, it's, it's well laid out. I mean, I fit well in this truck. Good visibility at the windows. I like the seat, the feeding, the, the seating of the seats. Yeah. And you like the GM because it fits, and yeah. I don't know, it's the Dodge seats fit, or maybe I'm just used to them. Yeah, they probably fit your Ram. body size, right? And you got a little bolster too. The GM's got that memory foam. I just suck right into those seats, and I love the GM seats. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with these seats. I just, I like the, the six passenger setup this one has. It's how my truck is that I use all the time. And, you know, six seats, that's like a minivan. You know, there's seven, so you can get everybody in here. Well, like that, you grandkids want to ride up front, you still got two adults here, or kids, yeah. or friends, or you can pack this thing full. And there's a lot of leg room back there. This is a very large crew cab. It might be larger than the Ford now. GM went up two inches on her crew cab for 15. 
but uh, this has a lot of room in front of the seat for storage or leg room. It's a tall truck. I, I, I mean, of course, this needs running boards. That's one thing you have to have on a Ram because they are so tall unless you do a lot of off-roading. But uh, it's a tall truck. This makes it a little on the hard side for traders. You've got to adjust to it with the drop-down hitches. And I don't think there's an option on a four-wheel drive to lower it any. A two-wheel drive is, of course, lower to the ground. But the four-wheel drive, this is, you know, one height fits all. Yeah, but if you've got four-wheel drive, they also think that you're going to need the height for four-wheel. Yeah, clearance. so you don't think it's like a macho thing? Or? Yeah, no, I just think it's the yeah. clearance. Well, I see a lot of women pulling horse traders, and I always thought that was interesting. But it's, it's a common thing now, and, you know, a lot of those trucks are pretty tall. See, and I pull a horse trailer with mine. Well, you, you got dodges. Yours are, yeah. yours are dead. Lift kits on with a normal I've got a leveling kit on, my gray one, and a lift kit on the white one. So, because the back end was sticking up in the air? Yep. That's a good idea, because, you know, unless you have a load on here, and especially the Ram Dually, it does yep. stick up quite a bit. Even with the load on my gray pick, when, pickup, when I put a leveling kit on it, it still sat a little too high. So, what was that? A leaf spring you took out? or what, what A leaf spring we took out, and then a, um, a new spring in the front. The coil? Yeah, and the coil, a, a longer coil. On the okay, okay. Well, so we, we pretty much put it Run up two back. inches in the back, or in the front, and brought it down two inches in the back and straightened it out. Cool. Because it just stuck up way too high. Yeah, yeah. And then you can adjust your headlights where they should stay, hopefully. Yep. yep. Or they're not blinding people, because that is one of the pet peeves of mine when somebody goes out and lifts the truck that your headlights aren't shining up too high, which. A lot of people think they're high lights now, the high, light, high beams now. Sure, and that's like on Ford, they actually put that beam down low yeah. because of that. I don't know if it helps or not. When Ford squat, as much as they do, they get the headlights up in the air again, so. And then I did like a, the leveling head kit, or headlights, where you gotta choose where oh, they really? were. Where, what vehicle was well, that? Well, Toyota, Toyota, Toyota had that little, yeah, you're right. Toyota had the little scroll thing. That's a good idea. I, I like the idea of an air suspension to keep you level keep all the time. Level, yeah. And then you've solved all the problems of, you know, wheel hop and, yep. and uh, you know, axle wrap. And, and you got a pinion. compressor in case you ever need it. Yeah, for that. And see, this this truck, you know, is standard with rear coils. It's a five-link system, so it's got a tracking bar and the, the four arms that hold the axle. Similar to what they've had on the front since the 19, or 1994. Yeah, but... I think that's when that started. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, that's a, and then two, the option on this truck is an airbag where that coil is. And I wish I had my driven in California, but uh, you know, that helps level you out somewhat. On the dually, actually, you have a button you push and it drops you down level. But uh, I've only seen one of those. I like to get some more of those to play with them. I think air rides is a good idea. And Ram's leading the way there in the air. Stating that all it was was seven inches of rain in what, two or three days? And it just turned us into Sea World. Yep. Surprised we didn't find any sea monsters. Yeah. River monsters coming out. Yeah, there's probably some down there. Now Giant they're down in, Yeah, now they're down in Mexico and <laughs> Gulf of Texas, or Gulf of Mexico, and people in Texas are picking them out. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably having barbecue in Texas and our sea monsters. The first no bike sign I've ever seen in Colorado. Right really, now. no bicycles? Yeah, I had a no oh bike. Oh my gosh, we actually took a picture of that. No bicycles. I'm gonna duplicate oh, some and set them man. on my house. Buy that sign. Buy a <laughs> sign like that. That would be cool. Then we wouldn't have fun dragging the corpses off the road. You know, I don't know how many of these poor bicycles we'd hit with our doors. Oh, sorry, bubs. Oh yeah. There was a road. bump and nobody told me that. Yeah. The horse probably just pooped again back there. I think he poops every time you get a bump. <laughs> he, he, didn't, I, he didn't go when we were outside, which oh, is good, because that he means did I didn't very have good. to... Yeah, we, when he had him outside, he didn't make a mess at all. But trailer's free game. Yeah. I feel bad, because I always leave you to shovel out the horse shit. Yeah, I know. That's how it goes. I'll have to stick my, my fork in there for you. <laughs> That's my job. At least when you rinse it out, all you got to do is rinse it out and the water falls through, right? That's right. That's right. It's, Logan Coach has got a great flooring, and that's the, the whiz-proof flooring. This one is called, the name for it, 
Uh, I'll think of it eventually, but it's got that, that the surface on top that you never have to peel, and then there's no mats. Oh, it's a cool to think of. But anyway, yeah, you're right. It just hose it off and uh, Makes it nice. Makes it easy. Yeah, it's a good cushion, too. You know, they don't really they don't, tear it up. A good traction. I, I, I'm really happy with it. Well, that and I've noticed that his feet don't hurt after a long ride. Yeah, yeah, that's important. And they don't hurt themselves coming out. A lot of times they lose traction on the mats. That's when they uh -huh. slip and hurt themselves right on the last jump out the trailer. That last hop because he can't step down. Yeah, yeah. That's nice, quiet truck actually. You can yeah. talk comfortably inside and not have a mess. I'm not screaming noise. at you. It's no, it's, it's quiet. Bad. We can stop and get some cherry juice. Yeah, I don't think you've here. ever screamed at me. No, I don't think I I've don't think ever screamed at you. I don't, I don't <laughs> scream at a lot of people unless I'm very, very mad. I'm okay. Well, I won't, I won't get you mad. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I'm sensitive, but I I bottle very well. So then you go out and shoot something. Right? Yeah, and then I go out and shoot something. <laughs> shoot some ducks out your back window. Yeah, out of my front window. We've got, we went in and sighted out all of the rifles and all of, like, we were just doing some clay shooting with the shotguns and we brought out all the pistols and we had about 10 people come down and shoot with us. And when I got off work, I was thoroughly irritated on Tuesday because I was supposed to be off by 4. It was 5.30 when I walked out of there. It, things did not go right Tuesday, so I grabbed my shotgun and I just started shooting stuff. Well, that's a good thing. I'm just glad I'm, I'm not that close to your house. <laughs> it's mostly clay pigeons, so... Oh, that's good, yeah. That, those uh, little white flyers that are 100 for 14 bucks, those don't normally make it to the ground, so... Yeah. This rascal, 410 rear end, 6.4 Hemi, on his 2014 Ram 2500. We're going to do 0 to 60 and do some brake times. We'll go gadget! We don't try to do any kind of burnout at the beginning because uh, a lot of these trucks now have the hill descent or hill climb or hill something and will defuel you. Race is finished. Let's see what it shows. We got to zero sixty pretty quickly. Okay, showing eleven thirty seven. Okay, really embraced in place. Okay. Sixty to zero. We're going to do braking distance. Okay, go. Good brake stand. Everything fell forward. So it's all on the floor. So, zero 60. Wow, 175.5. Taking off here with this 2014 Ram 2500. And this is with the new 6.4 Hemi V8. Now, this rascal, we're pulling 12,000 pounds, a Logan Coach horse trailer combo water totes in it. We're going to take it down I-76 and see what kind of fuel mileage we get pulling 12,000 pounds. The engine has the MDS, the multi-displacement system, so it can shut off half the cylinders when you're not towing a trailer, when you're not, you know, going uphill or any of those struggling situations. So we're going to put it out here on the interstate and we're going to see what it does. The MDS will probably never kick on, especially if I do tow mode. But uh, I want to see just uh, kind of fuel mileage this gets. Our baseline one to beat is the Ford to 6.2 uh, gas engine V8. 
and it I think as a baseline engine got 14 empty and I ran 11 loaded so we're gonna see what this Hemi does with 12,000 pounds we run about 20 miles we got a few hills a few uphill climbs I'm gonna use the cruise control and get it to 70 there to see what happens to our fuel mileage. I know I get better fuel mileage without tow mode. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to know when empty, when this truck is empty, I was actually getting the same kind of run here. Getting 17.7, which is good because on the Ford, it was getting 14 miles to the gallon. At 17.7, that's the empty truck. The empty truck, which was using the MDS. There's times you're going downhill, you know, you're getting 40 miles a gallon. You go back uphill and you're getting less. But um, it's interesting. I, you know, Ford uses their EcoBoost as their way of trying to win this fuel mileage war. And GM and Ram both use the cylinder deactivation, trying to shut off half the cylinders. So, you know, two different philosophies and I really like the 6.4, and then you can get the, uh, the Ison transmission, which is the heavy-duty one that's owned half by Toyota. Uh, it's in a lot of the big heavy-duty trucks, but uh, I, and the diesels have that. It is an option on the 6.4, but I'm pretty impressed with the 6.4. It's got good power. This truck has the rear coil now, which is came out last year. It doesn't have an airbag. That's an option, but it actually rides pretty well. It's just the only thing I like about this truck is it's very tall. You have to get an extra drop down hitch to hook up the trailers, and you need really a good set of running boards. And this one didn't have running boards, so I do a lot of hopping in and out of this puppy. Lots of hopping. We'll see tomorrow how Kelsey climbs in and out of this because she's a little shorter than I am. See so she can take a running start and jump into this truck. And it has the RPM bands about 1,000 RPM lower than what the 5.7 Hemi is. So your torque comes in sooner, your power. That's horsepower and torque curve both come in sooner. It's interesting, the fuel mileage has really driven people's driving habits. It used to be in Colorado with the feeling of 75, you'd see truckers, everybody going 80, plus you get past going 80 miles an hour. And then the fuel crisis hit for 2008, 2009, and beyond. Everybody slowed down. I mean, you see semis going 65 now. And then a few times this spring when fuel was fluctuating and people were feeling good, I guess they all got jobs or whatever was happening, and they were all driving at high speeds again. And semis and pickups and cars. And now this last week I've noticed things have slowed down again. So you can kind of tell what's going on with the economy by watching the speed of people that are passing you. 